Thank you for coming here today. My name is Kari Gruven. I am director of the art department of the Sea Alaska Heritage Institute. Thank you all for being here today to celebrate the artists that are participating in the Druid Art Show here at the Walter Sobolev Building and in our brand new youth art exhibit, which is over at the Juno Arts and Culture Center over uh, at, uh, over there, a couple of blocks. <laughs> okay. Before we move on to the awards, I would like to welcome to the stage President of Sea Alaska Heritage Institute, Rosita Whirl. You ready? All right. Uh, thank you very much, Kari. Kari is our, the director of our arts department, and she has done a tremendous job. Her and Davina, only two in the art department who work to organize this uh, juried art show. And first of all, let's thank Kari. Kari, thank you. Thank you, Kari. And Davina, where's Davina? Now, now I know that uh, uh, Kari is so organized that she was going to write my script because she kind of knows I'm like somebody who's running for a presidential office who goes off script. And I was trying to write my notes, and I said, darn, I should have had that TV prompter ready for me because there's so many things that I want to talk about. It's so exciting to have this juried art show uh, and also this, this competition. Uh, it actually, when we started the juried art show, the thing that really hit me was when Robert Davidson came to me and said, Rosita, we have a problem. Our Northwest Coast art is deteriorating. And we know that Northwest Coast art is probably the most beautiful art in the world. It is so unique. It evolved over a 4,000 year period thousands of years in the development of this art, and we achieved an art form that I believe should be declared a national treasure. It is unlike any other art in the world. We, don't, we ourselves don't think of it in that way because we live with it, we breathe it, it has cultural significance to us. But when we see our Northwest Coast art in the context of international art, art all over the world, we can see that it is unique. And we have tried our very best to try to figure out how do we protect it for ourselves. That's an un ongoing battle that we have. But we also knew that because of the forces of change that came to our country, and when we lost our traditional methods of teaching art with master apprentices, master apprentice approach, when our, our people no longer had that capability to be teaching our art because the, our art was seen as a, a belief system that the Western society didn't like. They liked our art, but they didn't like the underlying values of our art. I always quote what Joe Hotch says, that you, when they were trying to repress our art, they tried to protect, pro, uh, suppress the ideologies around our art. They tried to suppress the belief system. They told us it was paganistic, it was, it was sinful, but yet they collected our sins. And so our sins are found throughout the world where they are admired in museums, in art galleries. And we saw last week where they were selling our sins for thousands and thousands of dollars. We've seen where our, our war helmets, uh, I know maybe that wasn't so, something that we should be cherishing our, uh, that we were warlike people who we went to war. <laughs> but even that was emblazoned with wonderful art. And we see that those pieces have sold up to $2 million. So we know that we achieved very high art. It wasn't maybe recognized as high art, but now we are working to change that perception of our art from it's not just ethnographic art, 
to the outside world. To us, it's at Ubu. It's very significant. I don't know if any of you had the opportunity to be here earlier in this afternoon where we had a beautiful Chilkat robe that was commissioned by a, a Thunderbird member for, uh, in honor of one of our deceased clan members. And we had a ceremony where we recognized the spirit not only of the Thunderbird, but of the woman who had died. And so we know that the spirit of the Thunderbird and the spirit of that woman are interrelated with that Chilkat robe. It was, it was a, a wonderful, uh, and we kept it, a brief ceremony, because usually those kind of ceremonies can go on for days, right? That's good? <laughs> right. So anyway, uh, I, I'm very excited about this Jury Dark show, because we've, we've added some new things. Uh, as a result, uh, we had a, a, a native artist gathering with about 30 of our artists that came here to, to uh, Shuka Hit and upstairs in our conference room. And we talked about the state of our art and where did we want to go with that art. And uh, they made a number of recommendations, uh, including that we needed to really highlight some of the endangered arts. And uh, one of those art, art forms were canoes. And I, I hope that those of you who, who have read about Southeast Alaska, I know those of you who live here know what's, what's happening. I don't know if you were able to greet the canoes today, but among those canoes, we had several new canoes that were made in our villages. So we took that very seriously. Our artists did, and our communities took that very seriously, and we are resurrecting, reconstructing that knowledge around canoe making before it's lost. That came as a result, directly as a result of the uh, Native Artist Gathering and some of the things that they said, we as a tribe, we as Native people of Southeast Alaska, Clinkett, Hyde and Simpson must do. Um, the other thing that they said is that we need to focus on the youth the, our youth art. And uh, so we've been hosting um, uh, workshops throughout our region. Uh, I know we've done a very controversial thing where we're teaching art teachers about Northwest Coast art and how to teach Northwest Coast art. We know that if our art is going to survive, it's going to have to be appreciated by and understood by that larger society. We can't have the public condemning our art in the same way that it was in the past. So we have to restore that, we have to have them gain that appreciation and understanding of our art. We can't be hiding it, we ourselves can't be hiding it like we're ashamed of it. So we want the world to know about our art, but we don't want them to appropriate our art, ooh. It's, that's really a fine line, and I'm, I'm telling you, we navigate that all of the time. But we're very fortunate in that not only do we have a board of trustees, we also have a council of traditional scholars that remind us about our traditional values. And we're always going to them and saying we need to do this, and we need to change. And I always quote our chair of our traditional Native Artists uh, Committee, and he said, Rosita, how much change can we accept before we are no longer Clinkett, before we are no longer Haida, and before we are no longer Simsian? That is the question that is always before us. And I will share that probably sometimes we do make mistakes, but we are still tr trying, we're on that quest to be able to protect our arts for ourselves, protect our ceremonial arts uh, for ourselves, but yet share it with the rest of the world. Uh, we, want, we want people to, to appreciate and understand our art. Um, so in addition to that, have, I want you to go over and see that, uh, that youth juried art show. When I saw them putting it up, it was just, I almost started crying. It was just so awesome. And I will tell you, and I must commend, and I know I'm probably stealing some of Kari's report, uh, I have to commend the Simsian people. I have to commend Yakut. Metlakatla. Oh, I almost said Yakutat. I was looking at our, our, our Miss Bremner down there. <laughs> yeah. 
they did an, they are doing an awesome job of teaching our youth about art. Just go there and you'll see that. The other place is Ketchikan. Oh my gosh, you've got to see what the Ketchikan, what the Ketchikan Indian Association is doing in teaching that art to their children, our children. And Kari and I were looking at that and we said, we have got to replicate that in all of our communities. So, so that's one of our goals, is to be teaching uh, uh, our, our youth in integrating our art into the schools so that our children can be learning that art. And the non-native children can also be learning an appreciation of that art. So, I mean, we're so excited about that youth art exhibit. The other thing that we changed was um, uh, uh, we were trying to figure out, in our juried art show, how do we have pieces from our master artists? And we, I am so proud of our master artists. You could see their works here on our building, outside, the outside panels by Robert Davidson, the inside panel, the house panel by the two Boxleys, Papa Boxley and, and Baby Boxley. <laughs> Bill Holm has said, Bill Holm, the master, you know, of, of Native art, Northwest Coast art, so knowledgeable about our art. He has said that no matter what the Boxleys produce from here on out, this piece is going to be known as their masterpiece. And so we are so proud that we have this best example of Simpsian art on our building. And then we wanted to show people how our art can also evolve and adapt. And so when we send out that RFP for glass art, uh, who who uh, received that RFP? Preston Singletary. And so we have we wanted a very traditional piece, but yet in in a modern media. So this building just exemplifies the art of the Haida, the Simsian, and the Clinket. Uh, in addition to that, we have nearly a million ads, ads pieces on the building. If you look around and you'll see these ads pieces, a million of them. I mean, it was awesome to be in this building and hear Wayne Price hitting, adsing, the whole building, a million pieces. I mean, at first, I thought it was going to annoy our, our staff. We were here in the building already working. But after a while, it, was, it really became soothing and almost hypnotic. And I have to go to my staff, get to work, get to work, because they were meditating, I think. <laughs> so, so, so we're so excited, you know, that um, we've had the benefit of not only this, our Native Artist Gathering, but we also have the benefit of a very distinguished Native Artist Committee. And I know some of our, our Native Artist Committee members are here, and if they would stand so I could see them, who's all here? I see, where are they? Where are our, oh, there, yes, there are Art, uh, Nick, Nick, and I always, how to say his name, and it's Clinkett. How do you say it? There, there you go. Say, so learn your first piece of Clinkett, yeah. Um, Nathan Jackson is also uh, on our Native Artist Committee, uh, as well as um, Dolores Churchill. And don't say it, Simpsians. I know we're missing a Simpsian, and we need to take care of that. So did I miss anyone else on our Native Artist Committee? Mm -hmm. Oh, Steve. Where's Steve? Steve Brown. I know he's here. Oh, Steve. Well, anyway, Steve is a very distinguished uh, Northwest Coast artist. Again, I think really showing the strength of Native culture where we can accept that a non-Native can be as good or almost as good as our master artists. So anyway, I was telling you about our, our juried art show, that we wanted to have the best art in, our, in the juried art show. And so we created this category for master artists. And uh, I know the artists, the master artists thought about it 
And then one of them wrote to me and said, you know, Rosita, we really want to help you, but I just don't know how I feel at, you know, at my stage. And, and, and it was a very humble statement about whether I should participate in this juried art show. And I apologized profuse, profusely to those master artists. And I said, I am so sorry. What we were trying to accomplish was that we wanted to have the best pieces of our art. We wanted to have masterpiece artists showing in, in that juried art show. And so we created a category for them just to display their art so that our younger people and our public could see really fine, fine pieces. I mean, the exemplary art of Northwest Coast. So I invite you, you know, to look at some of those pieces. Uh, David Boxley, Robert Davidson, Preston Singletary, Nathan Jackson, uh, Dolores Churchill. They contributed the art and let us display it here so that our younger uh, emerging artists can have that inspiration of looking at our, our master art pieces. So uh, I think I've run over my time. Uh, I'm surprised that Kari didn't build in a trap for, to where I would disappear. But I wanted, you know, just to share, share with you some of the exciting things that we see that are happening within our region, great art in, throughout our country. Oh, the other thing that I, I forgot that I wanted to do is um, there were some pieces in, in the um, uh, art um, competition that didn't place, it, they didn't receive juried, uh, any of the juried art awards. And we do have a number of different categories in art, and that's one of the changes that you'll see. And uh, one of the things that we struggle with is we, uh, and we've gone round and round whether we identify contemporary art and traditional art. And some of our artists uh, said we should do that, other artists said no, and in the end, our artists said they did not want to have that separation between traditional art and contemporary art. So you will not see that in the juried art show. However, this is not to say that innovation and creativity is not occurring in our community. And so there are two pieces, two exceptional pieces that I thought that we should recognize and, and tell you that we are acquiring two pieces um, for our, our, our collection. And the Sea Alaska Heritage Collection and the Sea Alaska Collection is here housed in this building so that our younger pe people can come and study those pieces. And so the two that were selected uh, for our acquisition is the first one by Mick Beasley. Mick, are you here? I saw him here. Did he run away? Oh, Mick, Haku, Haku. So Mick, and I, I don't know if I should tell you about it. Have you been out to the Jury Dart Show yet? I'm going to spoil, spoil it and tell you that he made a mask, an incredible mask that almost looks like it could be pre-Columbian. And we know that those guys migrated and our relatives continued to go down south. And so we wanted to have this mask in our collection. And I invite you to see that. It's a gold mask. I tell you, it does look pre-Columbian, but we really wanted to have that in our collection. Mick. <laughs> Thank you, Mick. Uh, there was another piece that we thought was also very exciting um, and very creative and innovative, and it's a bracelet. It's a bracelet that's made with uh, regular bracelets, uh, a silver bracelet, but with spruce root uh, twined around the edge. And so we wanted to have Jennifer Younger's bracelet in our collection. Is Jennifer here? Oh, Jennifer, Haku. Uh -huh. So we purchased your bracelet for our collection, the Steel Alaska Heritage Collection. We're really proud to have it uh, that others will be able to see. Uh, I didn't give Mick a hug. 
<laughs> well, uh, I'll let, I'll let uh, Kari go on and tell you all about the awards that we're giving. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosita. We're going to start with the Youth Art Exhibit Awards. So are any of the young artists that participated in the Youth Art Exhibit here today? Raise your hand. Hi, tall. Stand up. I'm putting you on the spot here. Yay. Oh, that's great. And I'm so excited to see you here tonight. Um, and thank you so much for participating in the exhibit. And then I wonder, are there any of the, these students' parents and art teacher here today that participated in the exhibit? Can you, can you stand up? Parent, teacher, please give them a hand. Thank you so much for all you have done to support your young artists. And so the jury at the Youth Art Exhibit was a little bit of um, an experiment, and we didn't really know what to expect. But as you heard Rosita say, it turned out phenomenal. There's some exquisite pieces over there. So um, the juror for the exhibit was Lance Twitchell. Lance Twitchell carries the Tlingit name Rune. He lives in Juneau with his wife and bilingual children and is from the Tlingit Haida and Yupik native nations. He speaks and studies the Tlingit language and advocates for indigenous language revitalization. He is a, an assistant professor of Alaska native languages at the University of Alaska Southeast and also is a multimedia Northwest Coast artist and a musician. Uh, unless he was able to actually make it here. Rene, are you here? No. Um, if he was, I would have him read, read his own comment. <laughs> and he, he wanted to share the following observations of the youth art exhibit. The 2016 Juried Youth Art Exhibit allows us to showcase a wide variety of talent among our people. An opportunity like this allows us to give a stage and a voice to younger artists, and they have responded with power and incredible ability. More than a competition, this exhibit is a chance to provide a window into the growing future of Northwest Coast art and of the talent and abilities in a variety of art forms and media among our emerging artists. The consistent high quality of entries meant there were not enough categories and not enough awards for us to give out. So our hope is that this is only the beginning and we will contribute to the development of artists of Northwest Coast Design and through those efforts will contribute to the development of youth arts across our region and beyond. Thank you to all the artists who gave their time and energy and who put themselves out there in a judged exhibition. The Sea Alaska Heritage Institute is very proud of your accomplishment and looks forward to a lifetime of your work. And now to the awards. So to show our appreciation to all of the students that participated, every student will receive this t-shirt. This now, the artist of the t this uh, design is here today. It's uh, uh, David R. Boxley. Stand up, because David R. Boxley, he also did the celebration design that are on the t-shirts that you will see around and it's absolutely be beautiful any t-shirts posters everything i'm very proud to be able to share this with our students and so uh, while speaking of t-shirts if you have not picked up yours yet it's actually you can actually do that right out there in the lobby 
after you exit. So just give them your name and you'll get your t-shirt, okay? The award winners will receive a print of the wonderful celebration design. You might recognize this. I just talked about it. And uh, the cash awards for the youth art exhibits, they come in the form of stipends for art materials and is awarded to the art program in the school organization that helped their students participate. The art material stipends for middle school category is $350 for first place and $200 for second place. In the high school category, the art stipends are $500 for first place, $350 for second place, and $200 for third place. And these awards will be paid directly to the schools and organizations after celebration is over. So now, when we announce, announce the winners, so if you're an award winner and you, you're here or you're an arts teacher of the award winner, then please just walk up here on the side of the stage, come up to the podium and get your award. And then uh, Mr. Wonderful Photographer Brian Wallace Harry will take some photographs, if you don't mind, I hope. Middle school category, second place, goes to a student from Gustavus School. Her arts teacher is Jessica Tip Kemker. And the name of the award winner is Tessa Williams with her drawing, The Fox. So I wonder, are Jessica and Tessa here today? Did you make it over? Okay. So we will make sure, thank you, put your hands together for them. Middle school, first place. This goes to a whole group of students from Juno. Their arts teacher is Maya Lager. And the award winners are 61, grade, 61 sixth grade students from Santiki Heaney Middle School for their war armor and helmet. And you might need to help me pronounce the name of that. Do you, do you want to give it a shot? Well, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Come on up. So did you ever said about this piece? Are any of your students here today? No. Oh, let them know, everybody know. They have a fantastic job. So this is a creative piece that incorporates a wide variety of styles and materials. The title is fitting as the English translation means the edge of the eye is sparkling or his or her eye is sparkling. The color combination, symmetry, and use of space are done in a very effective manner. There you go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, now, now we figured out the logistics there. There you go. High school category, third place goes to a student from Annette Island School District. Her art teacher is John Hudson, and the name of the award winner is Faith Gray for her Bentwood Box Story of My Family. Faith, you're here. Thank you very much. Good job. 
Second place goes to a student from Ketchikan High School attending an art program run by a Ketchikan Indian community. Her arts teacher is Deborah McLevy. And the name of the award winner is Sky McInturf with the cedar bark hat, Snail's Trail. So I, I don't, Sky I don't think is here, but I know that Debbie is here. Our teacher, can you come up? Before you leave, I'm, uh, I'm jumping ahead a little. <laughs> so since Debbie is here, I just want to point out to you that the other two pieces that were submitted by her students for this show, they both received honorable mentions. So thank you so much. Yeah. First place, high school goes to another student from Annette Island School District. Her art teacher is John Hodson. And the name of the award winner is Jeanette Kaleka Buxton. Are you here? With her painting, Pop Sam and the Steelhead Salmon. Put your hands together. Oh, wait. Like, the jury said about your piece. Their creativity in design and use of space in this piece are excellent and result in a design that leave the average viewer wanting to know more about the story. It pulls us into a world by combining strong design principles with creative color use and shapes of pieces that move our eyes simultaneously up toward the sky and moving to the right, which is likely towards or in water. Yes? All right. Thank you so much. Good job. And so 10 pieces received honorable mentions, and they were created by Sky and Bianca from Ketchikan. So Sky McInturf and uh, Bianca Adams from Ketchikan. Jeanette Buxton Ian from Metlakatla for a second piece. Victoria Lent of Metlakatla for both of her pieces. Annie Perkins and Angela De Leon of Sitka. Elizabeth Stavland and Catherine Price of Juno. Shawan Jackson Gamble of Cake and Andrea Cook of Heidelberg. Put your hands together for all of these wonderful artists. And also great thanks to all the teachers who teach Northwest Coast Arts, all the schools and organizations who value and implement Northwest Coast Arts education, and all the family members who cheer their young artists on in their Northwest Coast Arts education. And we're ready for the Juried Art Show Awards. I would like to start with a, me uh, with a message to you from the, one of the jurors, Stephen Jackson. He was not able to be here today. He says to the artists, thank you to all artists who submitted work for this exhibit and for the effort put toward those pieces not ultimately selected for this exhibit. We are encouraged by the diversity of work submitted and in the future, we expect to see further development of even more artworks that will force us to expand our categories, just as our ancestors work for an expansion of categories. The pieces chosen reflect vitality through expansion of techniques, forays into new techniques, which are often old at the same time, and a deep investigation and reclamation of traditions. The artists who cre created them 
Help us to remember that we have always had long-standing aesthetic systems, that our art continues to force others to reconsider us and helps us consider our place in the world. So this year, we got the help from two jurors, Stephen Paul Jackson and Nicholas Kalanen, who's here. In addition, Shken George, who served as a, a juror consultant on the weaving and sewing divisions. Stephen Jackson is a Tlingit artist who began carving with his father, Nathan Jackson, in high school. I worked as a visual artist under the name of Strand Softy as a, an MFA in visual arts from Columbia University. He has exhibited internationally at the Alaska State Museum, the Anchorage Museum, and many other places. Nick Galanen is a Tlingit and Aleut artist from Sitka and comes from a long line of Northwest Coast artists. He completed his BA focusing on jewelry design and silversmithing at the London Guildhall University and went on to Massey University in New Zealand, where he earned a master's degree in indigenous visual arts. He teaches Northwest Coast Arts at UAS and pursues customary as well as contemporary approaches to art. Shken George is a Tlingit artist and educator from Angoon, who grew up surrounded by her culture and her mother's artwork. She has a BA in Fine Arts from the University of Puget Sound, and she attended the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe before she earned her teaching certificate. She is now merging teaching with culture and art in her, in her work. So, as you will see in your program, we are awarding prizes in four divisions and in 10 subcategories grouped within these four divisions. Best of category winners were considered for best of division. Best of division winners were considered for best of show. Each best of category winner receives $300. Each best of division winner receives $700. And the winner of best of show receives $1,500. In addition, we have a first and a second prize for form line design. The second place form line winner receives $700. The first place form line winner receives $1,000. So I will announce all the winners in each division at once and ask that all of those winners in this division come up on stage to receive your awards together. And then Brian. We'll take your photograph. There you go. Carving and Sculpture Division. The Carving and Sculpture Division includes a wood category and a metal category. Best of Wood category goes to Art Bugs Nelson for Raven Mask. Best of Metal category goes to Jennifer Younger for the Hungry Sea Lion Bracelet. And Best of Carving and Sculpture Division overall goes to Jennifer Younger for the Hungry Sea Lion bra Bracelet. So uh, I think Bugs is not here, but Jennifer, I think you were here. Can you come back up? Please. Jennifer Younger. And coming up are the sewing and weaving divisions and uh, jury consultant Shken George, she wanted to share the following regarding the artworks in these divisions. So would you want to come up, Shken? Hello. Um, before I um, make my comments, I just wanted to say I was really um, honored to, to be asked and really felt, um, how do you say, unworthy of, of this, but it was just, um, it was wonderful to walk in and see all of the work there. Um, I felt like the, 
This, the pieces in this year's weaving and sewing divisions, I felt like they were both of high quality and what really impressed me was the variety. Um, and there's many of categories and divisions and we just saw everything from amazing human woven figures that were all dressed in regalia to um, chillcat weaving on a huge scale to meticulous beadwork and it was inspiring and um, the comments that Kari made about the level of work um, that is being shown was really impressive. Um, it was hard to compare so many different types of things, um, but I think the quality is something that we're striving for and the reason that SHI is having um, the juried art show. So thank you artists. So the sewing division includes the skin and fur category. That's one category, skin and fur. A beadwork cate category. And we had a button blanket category, but uh, the, we decided to call it other instead. So best of skin and fur category goes to Jenny Wheeler for her seat ladder coat. Best, yeah, you, you may clap, yes. Best of beadwork goes to Candy McGilton yeah. for the octopus bag Laxo. Best of sewing other goes to Clarissa Rizal for the blanket Northwest by Southwest. And best of sewing division overall goes to Candy McGilton yeah. for the octopus bag Laxo. All right. The weaving division includes a chill cat category, a raven's tail category, and a basketry category. Best of chill cat category goes to Clarissa Rizal for chill cat child. Best of Raven's Tail category goes to Tiffany Vanderhoop for Raven's Tail Apron. And best of basketry category goes to Merle Anderson for Clam Basket. And best of weaving division overall goes to Clarissa Rizal for Chill Cat Child. So, Clarissa, is this Merle? Do we have Tiffany here? Okay. We have also a couple of, no, three honorable mentions. 
The honorable mentions go to Malcolm Miller, posthumously, for Northwest Coast Bracelet. It goes to Vivian Benson, for uh, might need some help, and Sip, Sip and Scoo. Is that close enough? It is, I think it's supposed to be Simshia. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about that later. Um, and the last honorable mention goes to Elaine Jack for the octopus bag. Please put your hands together for that. So before we move to the final division, uh, I would like to bring up Nick Galanen, juror, and he had a couple of words to, s to share with you. Uh, congratulations, everybody, for submitting such wonderful uh, work. I think it really shows how strong our, our cultural visual language is um, and the fact that we had such diverse entries from uh, so many different communities made this such a difficult process. Um, humbled to be here in this position to assist the other j jurors in this process as well. So uh, after working closely with one another, we're able to decide on these works and these um, that you're seeing today. I think they've, they all represent the great possibilities of our complex and subtle visual language using refined attention to form, craftsmanship, craftswomanship, composition, creative understanding of a, our continuum which we participate in today. So, Gunishtish. The final division is a two-dimensional division. This includes a painting and drawing category and a print category. Best of painting and drawing category goes to David R. Boxley for Tramsim. 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 Best of print. Print category goes to Alison Bremner for Cat Lady. And best of two dimensional division overall goes to David R. Boxley for Tramsen. for the form line design awards. For the form line awards, all of the pieces that included form line design were considered. The jurors said, just as we began in 2014, the jury at art show continues to explicitly, explicitly prioritize form line in our art. At its best, and just as with weaving, sewing, basketry, carving, and sculptural forms, form line reveals the power and complexity of our aesthetic systems at work. The second place for form line, best of form line, goes to Alison Bremner for Cat Lady. So the juror said, Alison Bremner's engagement with Formline, as evidenced by her cat lady, serigraph, demonstrates how this exquisite command of visual flow can at the same time encompass a humorous interrogation of historical contact between Tlingit and Europeans. Through the surprise at domesticated cats on the decks of Spanish ships, 
The surprise of that moment transfers into the surprises in her composition, which seem to easily interrogate the new, so no, easily integrate the new into a formline world view. Thank you. The best of, uh, oh yeah. And now to best in form line, best of form line. The jury said, the apparent ease that we discover in the best of form line only arises from years of dedication, from persistent investigation of historical and current examples, from inquiry into why the best pieces work upon us the way they do. In David R. Boxley's drum, Tramsem, this apparent ease comes from a hard-won understanding of the difficulty of coming to an artwork that shows within it the degree of complexity required to arrive at this level of simplicity and elegance. The asymmetrical composition demonstrates years of commitment to understanding and practicing the principles needed for this level of ease and confidence. For visual evidence of this commitment on this painted drum, Tramsim by David R. Boxley not only wins the best of form line, but best of painting and drawing and best of show. I was going to leave at 4.30 because we're the lead dance group for Grand Entry. I'm going to have to run and get dressed. Um, wow, I, re I had totally blown away by this. Um, thank you to the judges. Um, I have worked for a very long time to, to um, understand Formline. I, I believe that it is... Um, the most beautiful thing in the world, and and being able, I mean, I've I've still got paint on my arm from new form line I was making just up till last night to get ready to dance today. Um, thank you to see Alaska, uh, and my compliments to everyone else that that put in pieces. It's it's a you put your own ego and and your uh, your passion out there for everyone to see, and it's not always an easy thing to do. And uh, I'm just, I wish, I know there's better things that I could say right now, but I'm, I'm very flustered. Um, I hope everyone has an amazing celebration. Um, Gidhon is very much looking forward to what's coming. Oh, and to our kids from Metlakatla, if they might have taken off. But uh, to all the kids who entered, I'm so proud of the jury show, and especially those folks from home, it's nice to hear uh, Metla Cat was so well represented up here. Thank you all very much. I, I, I'm just absolutely blown away. Thank you. Many thanks for all of you for being here today. Um, so the exhibit will be open in there. There is a beautiful brochure it, and it's so beautiful, it costs one dollar, but it's beautiful. <laughs> that actually, Amy Fletcher, she was just going in there, she put together with all about, you can learn a lot about the pieces. Get that. Did you want to say something before they leave? Right, before you all run away, I want to introduce a very special friend 
who has taught me a lot and as what we're trying to replicate is what we saw in Santa Fe. And Bruce Bernstein is here. I've known Bruce from the Indian Museum, the National Museum of American Indians, and then he invited us to participate in the Santa Fe Indian Market. Bruce, if you just stand up before you, they all run away. Yeah. So we, we invite you, we, thank you, Bruce. I mean, thank you for, you know, I mean, that's what we're trying to do here in Juneau is to create another Santa Fe, and I learned a lot from that. So go and enjoy the exhibit, and I know we've got to all go and dance in that grand entrance. I told those Simpsians, don't let us be, have 2,000 clinkets running after trying to keep up with you guys. So enjoy celebration.